This is AQA A-Level Chemistry and it is from a series of questions on required practical skills. This is from RPA1, required practical 1, and it is question number 2. I'm going to recommend you pause each section, have a go on paper, and then review to see how you've done on each of these. Okay, so here is part A. And here are parts B and C. So let's start to take a look through the answers. So we've got here a question about titrations. We've got sodium hydroxide being dissolved to make 200 cm cubed of an aqueous solution. 25 cm cubed of that taken and titrated against 0.15 molar sulfuric acid. And we've got the results of the titrations here. So we need to calculate the mass of sodium hydroxide used to make the original solution. Five mark calculation here, lots to think about. In the first instance, we need to find the mean titer of H2SO4. I'm going to, I'm going to use 19.60 and 19.55. I'm not going to use my rough titer. A, it's very far away. It's definitely not concordant. B, you would never include the rough titer or the first titer in your mean. I'm also not going to use 19.85 because it's not concordant. It's not within 0.10 cm cubed of my others. So I put all of that in place. I find the average of the two I'm using and I get to 19.575 centimeters cubed. Now that I've got that volume, I can work out the moles of H2SO4 because I've also been given the concentration, which you can see I've color coded here to bring down. That means that we have got 2.936 by 10 to the minus 3 moles of sulfuric acid. If I know the moles of sulfuric acid, I can now work out the moles of NaOH in my 25 centimeter cubed sample. Now what's important here is that we realize that there is a 2 to 1 ratio of sulfuric acid to sodium hydroxide. So my number of moles of H2SO4 multiplied by 2 gives me my moles of NaOH, which is 5.87 by 10 to the minus 3. If I've got my number of moles of NaOH in 25 centimeter cubed, I need to find out how many I had in my initial 200 centimeter cubed sample. Remember, that's how much I made, and then I took a 25 cm cubed sample to do the titration. Well, to do that, to get from 25 cm cubed to 200, I'm simply going to take my value, 5.87 by 10 to the minus 3, I'm going to multiply it by 8, because 25 goes into 200 8 times. That takes me to 0.4698 moles. So I've now got my moles of NaOH. I want my mass of NaOH, which is moles multiplied by MR. That's 0.4698, which we can see here. And we're multiplying by 40.0. And I've just added how that's been worked out here, if that's helpful at all. That takes us to 1.88 grams. Just having a look at where the marks are taken here. You can see M1 through to M5. M3, just to see that we can get error carried forward here, if you show you're working out that you get an answer here and multiply it by 2, you do qualify for mark number 3. And mark number 4, if you get an answer to mark number 3, even if it's wrong, if you multiply it by 8, you can get mark number 4. So a little bit of extra info there on error carried forward. Let's take a look then at parts B and C. Well, for B, student uses a funnel to fill the burette uh, before starting the titration, but after filling, forgets to remove the funnel from the top of the burette. Why might that affect the tighter volume recorded? Well, you're going to have solution still in the funnel. That might drip down, and that means your volume in the burette will be higher than you expect. So the volume that you measure that you say you've added would be lower. That's going to have an impact on your results. What would be an advantage of using a conical flask rather than a beaker for the titration? Well, this is a really straightforward one. You've got less chance of drops spilling out while stirring.
You can see here, I've just added for part B as well, the funnel showing what happens. If I go back, I've got my burette, my funnel goes in, dripping from the funnel, taking the volume up, that's going to affect the volume. Okay, that takes us to the end of this question. Thank you for listening and goodbye.